she comes to our button shows and brings wonderful buttons to sell and share. Small, round, intriguing, irresistible to some, utilitarian and overlooked by others, buttons have a long and fascinating history. As everyday fasteners, they reflect the materials, methods of manufacture, economic and aesthetic social structures of their day. They record historic and political events, fashion and decoration, styles of art and architecture, literature, theater, and opera, popular stories and illustrations. They include every possible material of the last two centuries, both natural and manufactured. From primitive, primitive stones to metal, including gold, silver, pewter, brass, steel, and tin, precious and semi-precious stones, mother of pearl, porcelain, pottery, ivory, bone, fabric, paper, leather, glass, and plastics. As accessory and an adornment, as recorded in the 18th century, the so-called golden age of buttons, they defined wealth and bestowed social status. Buttons were produced mostly in Europe, in America, as far away as Japan, Alaska, and Africa. Until now, there has been scant information about buttons as social artifacts. The earliest recorded use of the word button appeared in the 12th century in a disdainful fail, vague phrase comparing the button to pride forms. The earliest buttons were found in excavations in Egypt, Greece, and Prussia. Although their construction resembles modern buttons with openings at the back, they were probably not used as fasteners but as beads, badges, and ornaments. Many portraits of the 16th and 17th centuries depict lavish displays of rows of ornamental buttons on gowns, sleeves, cuffs, inner and outer frock coats, and breeches of aristocratic men and women. The height of art and politics of buttons flourished in the 18th century. Here, more clearly than at any other time, one can see the social and political structure of everyday life. The lavish and extravagant buttons worn by the nobility and after the French Revolution, those worn by the emerging classes, became conspicuous and increased in size and number. They were produced and embellished in a variety of new materials, such as hand-painted porcelain, fabric elaborately embroidered in gold bullion, and most notably, carefully rendered miniature paintings under glass, painted in the style of the artists of the day. In the 19th century, buttons contributed to the growing development of industrialization. As the new middle classes emerged, more buttons were produced, and women competed with men for decorative buttons and equal rights. Manufacture and machine production flourished in Europe and America, and mass production of buttons made buttons inexpensive enough for all. The 20th century brought new and white, brightly colored materials. Plastics were introduced. Leo Bakeland, that was Bakelite, was his product. Uh, and later, the new product, Catalan, was produced in, great, in greater variety of colors, and those were the first plastics that were produced. Women adapted the four-hole button previously, previously used by men for their blouses. The Depression years of the 1930s yielded a spate of plastic, goofy, and humorous buttons, seemingly to cheer things up. Currently in this environmentally friendly modern millennium, corrosive nut, so-called vegetable ivory buttons, a popular material used in early 20th century button production is once again in demand. Here again, the button is made from natural material and is being used as a cultural and social artifact affecting the economics of the day. Hence, the button will help save the planet. It is with a touch of humor that we approach collecting of obscure and insignificant objects. It is not surprising, then, that these relative relics of the past are desired by collectors from around the world. What is surprising and also amusing is the vast number of people who are attracted to the notion of learning history from a button. I'm one of them. In this book, Mrs. Lockie examines the historical and current impact that buttons have made on society. Convincingly, she suggests to the reader that buttons are not so insignificant after all. She goes beyond the historical aspect of buttons and delves into their sociological and psychological consequences. This book reflects the most interesting slant on the subject and is the most extensive button study of button-related social phenomena to date. So that is the introduction, and I want to um, ask you to stop us if you have a question that we want that you really want us to answer as we're as we're talking, um, because we want to.
to share with you as much information as you want about the buttons. We have some displays uh, of buttons that we've put together, some that are light, some that are historical. Um, there are some that actually demonstrate how buttons are, how the political um, events of an era are reflected in buttons. And there are some cards here that have um, some writing on them, printing on them, so feel free to look at things. The other thing, we do compete as in our clubs, we complete, compete for prizes based on basic criteria. And the tray on the top that has the small pearl buttons, those pearls are from about the 1850s, 70s, and they're for a competition that's coming up at a button show in a couple of weeks. The other tray are all Asian buttons, and that was another competition from a couple of years ago, but they're so beautiful, I chose those to bring along because they're, they're truly works of art. And buttons are, really are, in many facets, works of arts. Works of art.
Manufacturers were putting their names on pants buttons. All of the overall buttons from the beginning of the 20th century have advertised manufacturers, trademarks, slogans, or names of companies. Buttons have helped to promote people as well as to sell products and services. Shank buttons were used for advertising long before the birth of the more modern plastic bags. And we have a lovely advertising button here, do we not? Yes, we do. Shall we pass that? Yes, yes okay. we can that. pass this. This has two sides of it, and it tells you that you, when you button up your overcoat, that you need to 